Welcome to Built on Air, a podcast and video series about all things Airtable. Each episode, we will talk with someone active in the Airtable community to discuss their experiences and showcase an interesting way they've used Airtable in their work. We want to thank our sponsor, OpenSide. OpenSide's newest product, Onto Air Forms, is the Airtable form solution that you've been looking for. Visit OpenSide.com to see how you can take your Airtable workflow to the next level. For a limited time, get Onto Air Forms free when you purchase the Onto Air Action Sapier connector. Finally, visit BuiltOnAir.com to sign up for the Built On Air mailing list where you can get weekly updates on the new podcast episodes and other fun Airtable news. This week we visit with Lainey Lamar, an upbeat data specialist who excels at helping overwhelmed entrepreneurs get organized. Lainey has made a name online as Miss GSD and specializes in helping online creatives make data, systems, and operations fun in their work. She will share ideas and tips on how to get started with Airtable and how she gained her own experience with it. Um, well, you you can go ahead and get set up and share your screen, but um, I guess, is this something that you uh, offer as, you know, a template or one of your courses, or is this sort of one of those, you know, give the win type samples, I guess? Definitely a give the win sample. This is, um, I have this at missgsd.com slash Airtable dash content. Um, and you can find that there, but this is a really simple, uh, now I know the usual guests as we've established, the usual guests will have really fancy nested tables and all the, the formulas that you scratch your head about and they're very exciting. Um, this really brings it back to basics because keep in mind the people that I serve are not tech people. They're not excited about Airtable. They just want a better way of organizing things. So can you see my screen? I can indeed. Okay, good. So this is uh, content creation. So uh, going back to our buzzword of content, what the heck does content mean? It can mean all kinds of things and I do cover it in here. So uh, we'll go through each one of our tables. First one, starting with your messaging. So when you have an online business and you're trying to be known for something and you're getting visible for something, um, you usually have, you know, three, three to five core messages that really define what your business is about. So you would list those here and uh, you can maybe build on your philosophy of what that message is. And a great book for that is uh, Donald Miller's Building a Story Brand. I really recommend that book for making sure that what messages you're putting out there is consistent to your brand, consistent to your voice, and really does promote what it is that your business is about, what it stands for. So all of these others, let me see here, all of these other tabs, I'm going to move our little heads here. There we go. Um, All of these other tabs are linked to or all these other fields are linked to the other tables. This way you can start to see what related content you're working on that you've already created, um, that you've been featured on or offers that you have that are related to that big brand message. So let's say you have message number three that you see, oh, well, I haven't really created a lot of content around that. Maybe it's a message that I need to promote more, or maybe it's something I just ditch because it's not something that is really aligned with the sorts of things that I'm publishing, the things that I'm putting out there. Mm -hmm. So moving on to the offers tab or table, I should say. So generally most people that I work with will have paid offers and they'll have free offers. Uh, We were talking about that earlier where the free offers are sort of giving you some street cred as to you being a person who's able to talk an authority on that subject matter, something that might be worth you investing in. So kind of almost like a sample of, of what, what kind of work you do. So your free offers and your paid offers, you could put these separately, but I put them together because to me, they're still offers. There's still things that you're putting out there. There's still things that have value, um, respective to your brand. So free offers, Um, The paid offers here have services and programs, courses, digital downloads. I don't know if I've got other ones here. Oh, if you have a masterclass or something like that. And like any other Airtable single select drop down menu, you can go ahead and add whatever it is that is appropriate to the type of business that you're running. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what I really like, this is the parts where I start to nerd out because you're able to connect your offer back to the message that it reinforces. So if you have an offer that is this really brilliant thing, it's a great thing that you came up with, and this is especially important when you're in creation mode. Oh, I have this really great idea for this course that I want to deliver, and it's it's like what everyone needs, and everyone's going to want it, and it's going to be the best-selling thing in the world, and great. It's, it might be a great idea, and it might be really brilliant, but if it doesn't actually align to the messages that your brand is about, you either have to revise what your messaging is for your whole brand. Is this what we want to do back it all the way back where we're going to change what our brand messaging is? Or you just know that, look, maybe this is something to scrap. This is maybe not an idea that you need to be executing, that you need to be working on. So I really, really like that field in a nerdy uh, systems way because it keeps you from getting too far off from what's important um, to your growth. Right. And it is something where it's like, oh, this great, you know, linked record feature of Airtable. It really like takes on this in, in this context, this like deeper, like philosophical meaning. It's like if a message isn't in the list that you can link to, you must think again about, you know, like what you're offering. Is it right? You know, well, like it's like this great sort of like something that's so simple, like yeah. just one cool field in our table, it really does kind of, you know, force you to ask that question of yourself every single time you think about launching something new. Anything, even a blog post, anything so that you can't, this is, you know, when people are in these Facebook groups asking for accountability buddies, you don't need an accountability buddy. You just need a linked field <laughs> <laughs> because at least this will keep you on track as to whether this is on brand for you or not. Are you changing your whole business model for this one idea? That's fine, but know that this is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it's like, well, you can't just like, then, you know, the sort of other like flip side of it is, right? If you go back to the, your messaging table and there's only that single offer there that links to your messaging, you know, the, the implication is like, well, I need to make sure that, you know, all of these other tables are filled with things that link to that message right. too. So, you know, again, it's that sort of like, it's really easy to see regardless of where you are in the base, kind of how these things interact. It's always top of mind. I so when that. I was talking to you earlier about how people sometimes have a hard time, not just creatives, everyone has a hard time with this. When you have something that you, um, you've created, the big picture of something, and then you start working on it and you get caught in the weeds of the details and the stuff that keeps everything going, um, then suddenly you're just doing all the minutia work and the detail work and you lose sight of that big picture vision. Well, with this table or with this base, you can't lose sight of that vision because you're constantly keeping yourself accountable, even if it's just one moment of reflection on how does this relate to everything else. And all the other tables relate to each other that way as well too. So I'll show you that when, when, we, get, when we get to that bridge. Awesome. However, um, I also have a column here for links because I don't know um, about you. No, I do know about you on this one. I'm, I guarantee you it's the same way. When you are asked to refer back to, let's say, in this case, an offer, some freebie offer, and you have to find the links, um, nothing drives me more nuts than having to log into my website to go get the link to my website. Right. Or direct link to the resource or the code that I would have to embed into a new blog post to be able to pop up for, no, forget it. <laughs> Everything is saved here. And we always come back to this base for anything related to content. So that's the end. Uh, any images related to promoting that freebie? Again, if I'm on my phone and I want, I decide that I'm going to be promoting, um, I don't know, an Instagram story or something like that. And I want to put a, an image of one of my tables. I have that already here in my own base. So I can just download it from my phone and then upload it into Instagram as opposed to, again, searching through, I don't know, Dropbox or Google Drive or maybe logging into my website and then finding that one image. No, forget it. This is not how we live. We are organized. We put everything here like civilized people. Right. Yeah. You're like, do a little bit of extra effort now so you can be lazier later. Oh my um, gosh. So lazy. So <laughs> lazy. It just makes it so easy and you're not having to search for anything. I'm a big fan of not searching for things. I think that's one of my big pet peeves too, is when you can't find a document or an image, it makes me insane. 
completely. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, get it, you're like, okay, well, what do I need to not like, just, just give up on this entirely and, you know, say, oh, I'll do it later. I can't find that stupid thing. Everything here. Get it. Keep it very Zen. Yeah. Cool. So then we have two more uh, linked fields. One is to the content library and the other one is to content creation. So again, the content that you create, that you publish, the stuff that you put out there, um, how does that relate to your free offers? How does that relate to your paid offers? Do you have maybe an offer that you don't have any content promoting? Is that something you need to change? Because if you have an offer that you are not, um, you're not positioning yourself to be visible about, maybe maybe it's time to either rethink the offer or rethink what your publishing strategy is. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's that table. Moving on to content creation. <laughs> so we've got these grouped by uh, content types, you see. It's not just content, content buzzword. Uh, we've got some different right. types. Here they are defined. Look at these up. <laughs> yeah, so we've got some blog posts and YouTube videos, newsletter, podcasts, free resources. Again, this will depend largely based on the type of business that you're running, the type of um, content that you're publishing. but I've got here some blog posts and they're grouped by type. So that's great. You can easily see it in that, that easy to manipulate way. And of course, we've got the grid views on all these things as well, but we'll explore those in a minute. Awesome. Um, so the content type and your lead magnet for that, um, that specific piece of content. So in this case, we have um, a blog post called why models and rock stars are made for each other. And then we have um, the lead magnet relating to our free offer number one, and it reinforces message number one. So these are all linked in a way where every time you create something, once again, you're being accountable to the big picture vision, but also the little details of, of each piece of content that you put out there. Everything always relates in a hierarchy to each other. So I mean, there's nothing, well, there, I'm sure there's a lot of things worse, but it's really sucky when you put out a, you have a really great idea for a blog post, you work really hard on it, you get all the keywords and, and the nice images and everything created, and then you realize this has nothing to do with anything that I already offer. And then you go ahead and create another whole new offer for it. No, forget it. Make sure that you're creating content that always relates to what you have to offer. Just like all of your offers relate to your big picture message. So it's kind of like baby stepping your way down. Right. Yeah. It's kind of, it's again, just that, you know, keeping yourself on the, you're like, well, this is great and fun, but like, does my audience care? Like, yeah. you know, do they keeping care about my, my Lego collection, even though I'm, you know, like posting about, you know, fashion or something like that? I mean, maybe, but like, yeah, it's like, again, you just have to Think, right? Like, and, and just be accountable all the time. I love it. Because here's the thing too, you only have so much brain space and again, energy to be creating uh, anything really. So it's a shame to be, uh, no, I don't want to say it's a shame. Especially creatives have such great, brilliant ideas. They have like a million ideas a minute and they start acting on the ones that they're most passionate about. And sometimes when they're, they're most passionate about don't actually relate to their offers or their message. Uh, so, you know, you can put those somewhere, you can put those somewhere to live late and address later when you do have enough that you want to create an offer around that. But uh, you'll know that you're wasting your time publishing something like that at this point. It doesn't actually serve you. So the status, uh, we've got a few of them here. We've got scheduled and published, work in progress, ideas. Again, that just makes it easy for you to group and categorize them in a way where, so if we have all the scheduled stuff on this con uh, on this table, that's great. And then we can just go over to a work in progress um, uh, view so that we can just work on the things that actually need to be worked on. For sure. We have publishing dates. We have uh, when we need to create them by. So this is helpful when you're actually in the work in progress stage, if it's been edited. So if you're working with a team, that makes it a lot easier too. So everyone can see, oh, it's ready to be published or it's ready to be scheduled or the graphics need to be done. And then what else do we have down here? Oh, we've got that content link. So when you're working on something in a Google Doc, for instance, um, where everyone can just easily have access to something that is a work in progress. 
So that's the content creation um, base. And like I said, this is very simple to uh, veteran air tablers because you know it's not a ton of of nested formulas or things like that, but it is really helpful in a very simple way to keep you accountable and keep you on track to when things need to be published and, and how they need to be published and whether they even matter. Right. Yeah. I mean, something doesn't have to be complex to be good. Right. I and agree. I think sometimes even in, in the case of something like this, where it's like, I'm having to keep myself, like I need to sell myself on this to use it for me. Right. It's not something I'm building for a company where we train people. It's like, if I'm not excited about using it or if, you know, the, the sort of barrier of effort is too high, mm -hmm. what is even the point, you know, make it, keep it as simple as possible. So, you know, people will, you know, engage with it and actually use it. And here's the thing too, if you overcomplicate something like this, nobody's going to use it. Even the veteran air tablers. For <laughs> sure. You really do have to make it accessible. It can't take up a whole lot of your time. It might to set it up, but I've already set it up for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Then with the content library, the next table is the same as the content creation table. It's just the stuff that's already been put out there. So it's just kind of an abbreviated version with, um, keeping you accountable again to your offers and to your messaging, um, but also with your publication date, your URL, because once again, we've established there's nothing that makes me more irritated than having to search for things I can't find. So just having that URL handy with the graphics and any additional notes that, that might be relevant to keep track of. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to add another extra one that's the same as all the others, but it's as featured in. So if you do a lot of guest posting, if you're doing podcasts, if you're um, doing joint master classes that are available for purchase or something like that, it's just good to have that library as well. Because once again, we've established there's nothing worse than having to search for a link that you can't find. So if you want to uh, promote something that you were on somewhere else uh, at a later date, it's just nice to have that handy. So those are kind of uh, the, the easy peasy, super helpful content creation um, tables that I've got there. I love it. And, and I think that the, the key difference to me for this that's that's different than a lot of sort of the other words like here's you know something to help you schedule your posts or mm -hmm. you know like uh, you know see like what's in progress and what needs to be done I mean you have all of that here but I think that your messaging table is really key mm -hmm. right because really that's the and I think it's also just this, like that reminder, right? That it's like, yeah, I'm in here and like, I'm doing this stuff and I don't want to write this blog post or whatever. It's a drag. But then, you know, you are reminded, hey, it's promoting, you know, this thing, which makes me money, which is really cool. And it's promoting this message that I, you know, care about, which is really cool. Or if you're like, I don't care about either of those things, then, well, go back to the messaging table and, you know, think more about sort of, you know, the bigger picture. So you really do have, you know, everything from like super granular to kind of, you know, on the biggest sort of macro scale, um, you know, for someone who is a creative, you know, doing this sort of, you know, one man band type thing. And that's the key to it, right? Like if this is, these aren't big corporations. These aren't even big organizations. The people that I'm working with and the people this is supposed to serve are the people who have you know, a company of one, or maybe have a few contractors that work for them. So for them to be accountable to themselves is very important, but it's not always easy to do. And my goal is always to be able to help you do the things that are going to get you ahead, but always positioning you in that power position of knowing how that gets you ahead, knowing why that's important, always reminding you, but this is what the goal is. This is what the end vision is so that you never lose sight of it as you move forward with your actions, because then you start devolving into doing work that doesn't actually matter. And it's just busy work instead of the, the business work that gets you ahead. Right. For sure. Well, thank you so much for this, Lainey. This was awesome. Um, we'll definitely include a link to your website in the show notes. So everyone can check out this template. Um, and you have what, I mean, you have a, a good, a good amount of Airtable resources, I would say on your site. I'm not sure how many, but you would know because you have them all archived <laughs> in a, a nice Mine is teal. My content <laughs> creation table is teal, not pink. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. It's the this a more of a soothing color. Yeah. But the That's right. pink pops quite nicely on screen. Um well yeah, thank you so much for uh taking some time to kind of chat with us about Airtable and stupid buzzwords and you know systems philosophy, I guess, whatever that even means. That's a I will always one. be here for you. <laughs> stupid buzzwords. We can talk about this anytime. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe a round two, right? With some bingo cards for next oh time. Oh my gosh, how much fun would that be? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Lainey. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, Zoe.